Hey GB, I'm Ron Chillers here with Leanne Campbell, who's a foster parent here in Kansas City. And we are hoping that together we can teach you a little more about foster care. So Leanne, what first inspired you to become a foster parent? Well, I first grew up in a home. My dad and my grandfathers and my brothers and my cousins and everybody is in police and military. And so we were raised with the idea of reaching out and bettering your community. And um, it started when my one of my girlfriends, her dad was an alcoholic and it was really dangerous in her home. And my dad just said, she's just gonna come live with us for a while. And she did. And I just slid my clothes over in the closet and she came with two shirts and a pair of pants. And so she shared with me and that was um, an un, a non-formal way of doing foster care. And then um, as the years progressed, we always had other kids living with us, kids whose parents were having a hard time or um, their dad got their dad or mom was arrested or whatever. And then um, I got married, moved here to Kansas City, and my youngest brother Moses, who was our naughty foster kid in New York, New York uh, City, um, came to live with my parents. And I've seen him just blossom into a young man who's now working in the inner city in New York City with guys, young guys that are in crisis, and he's totally giving back. He's married. He has three kids. He's happy and um, just seeing that life change was really inspiring for me. So when we started our foster care journey, um, I had two biological daughters at the time and um, we halfway through my third pregnancy with my daughter, she died and I was told I couldn't have any more kids, which I took as a sign from God to pursue other options. Um, they told us that we wouldn't have any more kids. Um, during my foster care classes, I got pregnant and I had a feeling it would stick. Um, but when we were down our classes, by then I was like three and a half months pregnant and they said, you know, you're not going to get calls for babies. It's only going to be older kids. And my, the end of my first week following my class certification, we got a call to take a brand new baby girl and I was pregnant and we did take her. So that was the start of my fostering journey. So how long have you been a foster parent and how many kids have you cared for in that time? I have been a foster parent for almost seven years and we have had six long term. Um, we do emergency infant care, so I take care of drug addicted newborns usually. Um, but there has been times when the newborn will have a sibling and they don't have anywhere for them to go. Um, so we have taken in older kids. Um, we actually... I mean, the foster road is not easy at all. We have had our heart crushed. We had a little girl from birth, and we lost her when she was 18 months. And then after watching her for another year, we had to report some abuse. And then the court didn't agree, um, even though two police precincts felt it was abuse. Um, the court didn't decide to bring her back into care, so she was cut away from us when she was three. So there's definitely ebbs and flows. but. Through it all, no matter how hard it is, I've always asked, how do I tell the next child, your pain isn't worth my inconvenience? So we kept fostering after losing her, and um, we got our, our little guy, Isaiah, who's now adopted, and he's five now, and we got him when he was four months old. He was just this little chocolate, snuggly, dimply baby, and he was awesome, and um, we had to fight really hard for him. Um, there was a lot of, um, I don't know how to say this, a lot of mm, power of abuse, abuse of power, that's it, abuse of power, that's the words I'm looking for, um, with his case, and we adopted him, and two weeks after his adoption was final, Ian was born, and we got him from birth, and then he only had like three or four visits with his biological parents because their addiction was just really ravaging them. Um, and so we adopted him and that, that took two years as well. So it's not, fostering isn't like an easy road, like, oh, I'm going to go pick out a baby. We're going to get adopt. I'm going to adopt him and save him from a bad situation. It's usually years of, of getting to know the birth parents, loving the birth parents, but seeing the reality of who, who they are in their situation and doing what's best for the child. Even if that means, sorry, you can't see your baby right now. So it's hard because um, in my position, I feel for the parents, but I'm also raising their kids. So 
I believe redemption happens with anybody, but at, there are times when I have to prefer my foster kids over their parents. And it, you become the person that mom and dad don't like really quickly, <laughs> especially when their kids start calling you mom and dad, or they say, I don't want to be here on this visit. I want to go home. Um, and that's the emotional ties, but that's why it's so important for the kids who have come from this life that is unhealthy and parents who are addicted and ad addiction is normal to come into a home and be like, oh, we sit down at the table to eat. I remember we had a little guy and he was, well, he wasn't little, he was 11. Um, and we sat down, he said, he asked uh, my oldest daughter, he said, why is your mom always here? Why is she home all the time? And she said, well, she's, she's always here. I don't know. She didn't have an answer, but he thought it was really foreign. He thought it was very bizarre that my husband came home at night that we had family time and he preferred just to kind of go off on his own. I was like, no, 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 just come over and just understanding what a healthy family looks like. Like, you know, I'm going to get upset, but now I'm not going to beat the snot out of you. Do you know what I mean? So, so you mentioned you have adopted two children. Can you tell me a little more about how the adoption process goes? Sure. Um, well, when we did our foster parenting classes, you have to always keep your credits up. It's kind of like a continuing education thing. And one of the options we knew we wanted to adopt, um, if there was a permanency issue, we wanted to be the safe option. Because once the child's been in your home, I knew, I mean, like, you could hang out at my house for an hour and I'd be like, okay, you're part of our family. That's just who we are. So um, there's a series of classes that you can take after your foster parenting classes, which are called foster parenting. Initial classes are called STARS. And once you're done your STARS classes, you can take the adoption classes and that continues your credit hours. So you don't need the 35 credits because you get most of that taking your adoption classes. Um, and basically there's the state tries not to have any child in an orphan status. So if you see someone like, on a photo listing, that means mom and dad's rights are already terminated. Um, and that's really rare. It's very hard. Our goal is always to keep a family together. But there are times when it's not safe. So like with our little guys, mom wasn't safe, dad wasn't safe, and we were certified, um, but they still didn't put them in that zone until right before they were ready to say, okay, you can adopt them because they don't want them to have orphan status ever, which is a good thing, but it's it's excruciating as a foster parent. It's really hard. Um, and then, so you take these classes, which are all like, you know, I mean, like for me, because my little guys are African-American, um, you know, I took like ethnic classes. I learned how to do their hair. I learned how to take care of their skin. I learned, and I had an expert lady come in and she teaches you even how to like make your own products or whatever you need to do. Um, and she's very well known in the black community and um, they really want to make sure like you can surround a child. We live downtown. Our church is multicultural. We have a lot of black friends. They wanted to make sure the boys would have good, strong black role models, which I think is important too. Um, and my brother's black, so that helps. Um, but they, you just want to make sure you're the best fit. So once we adopted Isaiah, um, when Ian was born, they always want to play siblings together. Now they have an older brother who's adopted up in Liberty. And so the, they came to both sets of parents and said, because we keep the boys together, they see each other every month. And um, they said, you know, who wants the baby, basically? And we knew the other parents didn't want any more children. So we took Ian, which I was glad, because he was like four pounds. Oh, so cute. Um, and so we took Ian, and he had colic for eight months, going through withdrawal and all that. And, um, and as I said, you know, parents didn't have their, very much of visitation, but when it came time to adopt him, you have a, like a big panel and on the panel they'll interview. So there were other family members that came to the panel petitioning to adopt this little guy, but because we had adopted his brother, we were given legal preference. So, um, we try to keep siblings together unless there's like sibling on sibling abuse. And then we're very cautious with that. So, so through your experiences, what have been some of your rewarding moments? There are a lot of rewarding moments. Um, I, th I think a lot of people don't realize how much a child has, like if you see a kid in school and you know they're in their foster parent's house, you don't really understand like, you're like, oh, they were in a bad situation. They just got taken out. Everything's better. And you know, they're, they're ripped from a life that they only know, thrown in with strangers. A lot of times they change schools. So you're in a strange school, strange home, strange food strange belief system you don't know what they believe they don't know what you believe and you're already hurt and so when you get a child that comes in your home and they're all defensive even babies um i'll start with the babies and i'll give you a big kid um my 
one of my best, most rewarding moments was we had a little girl going through meth withdrawal. And meth is horrible. Like they have seizures and their eyes roll back, but they'll look at you, but they kind of just, their eyes never look at you. And it was about six weeks, I was feeding her every hour and she was vomiting and seizures and she was literally on me all the time. I usually just tuck them right here so I can feel if they stop breathing. Um, and they're really tiny. They go from their, whatever their birth weight is, they usually drop at least a pound. And six weeks later, she had stopped having her seizures for about a week. And all of a sudden she just looked at me and I was like, I, she didn't smile. Like most babies are smiling by six weeks but she could see me and I knew she could see who I was like I was there and she was the first time she had ever been aware of me in the room and I remember just moving like can she really and I was really excited because that meant her brain was healing and those are the moments that you live for like okay here we go everything's starting to click she's starting to get healthy and well um, on the other side um, with my bigger kids um, <clears throat> we had a boy and he was 11 and um, he didn't know that a shower could have hot water. He didn't know that the water came out the top. He didn't know what soap was. He didn't know how to bathe himself. He didn't realize that shoes, your feet aren't supposed to go through the bottom of your shoes. Um, he didn't know that you had to brush your teeth and that you had to brush it with toothpaste and that you had to floss. He didn't know any of those things. And seeing him literally in two weeks go from a kid who would talk with his head down, he wouldn't make eye contact, having his shoulders back and taking care of even like I mean I taught him one time how to make his bed and it was perfection like better than my biological kids <laughs> and um, seeing them take ownership and taking pride and becoming the girl or boy God intended them to be is a safe loved child so those are my most rewarding for sure well wow, thank you so much and thanks for making a difference in those children's lives so We've learned a lot about foster care, and I hope that you can make a difference in your, in your own community. Now back to you in the studio. Lights will guide you home and ignite your bones, and I will try.